Hey everybody, this is Blake's Nature Life, and we're with our man John. He's doing some uh, grafting on these cherimoya rootstocks. Right now we're doing Adamoya. Gotta get a little drink in. Gotta get serious. Right, so what are you doing this right is, now, John? I'm, I'm cutting one bud. We're gonna do a one bud graft. And this is a Pink's Mammoth. Mm -hmm. And I'm rocking it like this so I can control the depth of cut and not slice my finger, which would be good to not do on film. Yeah, definitely. So I'm going around it to try to get through the wood. I'm gonna do a side. I'm gonna do a side wedge graft. Um, might yeah, you might come on this side to see. I like the side wedge a lot. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to get that cambium layer back. Gives good cambium contact, and I can do it quickly, so I like that. It's perfect. You can see where he cut into it. So what kind of graft is this called? A top of side side wedge, side, side cleft. Side wedge, side cleft. Yep, let's line it up. Perfect. And it's flexible. Yep, that'll do it. There we go. Now we can see it. So you get that contact. It's almost a micro graft, but not quite. It's just a single. It is bud, a small one. Single bud graft. And I want the pink's mammoth to be dominant because that's my favorite of these three. Uh -huh. So I think you want mostly pink's mammoth. I had a pink's man, but that's one of the trees I lost during the big like freeze in 2010. How big was the tree at the time? I wasn't that big. It's probably about five, probably about six feet tall. It had it's made still some, a nice it tree. made some fruit. That one and Geffner are the two that I had fruited out there at the time. Mm -hmm. And the Geffner's pretty good, but so I really next, like that. Pink let's do pet pack chong. Okay. So let's. Oh, I didn't wrap. Let me get the. I gotta, I gotta finish what I'm getting ahead of myself. So if you had a, a really steamy greenhouse, could you leave it like that to, to yeah, heal? Absolutely. This just gives it like you, a miniature greenhouse. You probably could anyway, but... You can see how he's pulling it while he goes around it. Um, it really only st sticks to itself well, and you gotta stretch it to get it to stick yeah. to anything. I love this parafilm. I so much easier than plastic. Yeah. Parafilm, I'd highly recommend parafilm. I and like I, how it just, when, it, when the graft's ready, it eventually just falls off with the weather. Yeah. It just goes right through. And I like to cover the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They say the parafilm is semi permeable, so it allows the scion to breathe. It's a good thing to know. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> It seems like it. And the lab parafilm is not as semi-permeable. Although I've used lab parafilm. Um, but since this is short, I'll do two buds. And I got plenty of sticks of pet pack chong. Uh -huh. I thought I had a pet pack chong, but it turns out that it was a te moilata, a Adamoya reticulata and, custard apple hybrid. And tell us the mixture of this one you just put on there. The that that pink's mammoth it's a uh, adamoya so it's a sugar apple uh cherimoya hybrid it's australian um, good quality straighter ish looks good it'll work anyway when you're grafting and you're trying to cut these wedges mm -hmm. keep your keep your wrist locked and i do a little slicing motion just don't push forward don't chisel forward i actually do a little slicing motion and then go fast and no well i don't know i go fast because i practice it but you can take off a thin layer that way i like how you're going you're moving the whole arm not your wrist yeah yeah don't yeah move it to shoulder and the elbow now he's keeping his wrist straight and then you can make a straight cut otherwise it makes a gouging cut you really so see that that's pretty smooth and turn a little bit Turn it this way. That's perfect. See that? So that'll work. That'll work. And if your scion and your root are different size, just line up the cambium on one side. It'll grow to it. See? So that, that'll work pretty good. 
Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Close enough. You, you know, good. if everything's, you know, the right time of year, everything's growing, like these cherimoyas are starting to swell. Fresh off buds. I mean, they pretty much take. Um, what is this, the assess rate on these uh, different cherimoyas with and anonas? The with, with the nona, assume, assuming everything's clean and and the right growth state, it's pretty. For Cherimoya, I found Cherimoya to be the best rootstock for us because we have cold, wet soil in the winter, mm -hmm. and they've. I read on Tropical Fruit Forum that they've found the same thing in California. And something I just discovered, um, not that I discovered, I just learned was that our temperatures here for about six months out of the year are actually more similar to uh, parts of Southern California um, than they are to South Florida. Our summer temperatures are similar to Southern, Cal uh, to Southern Florida but our winter temperatures are similar to Southern California. That's crazy. And so I'm hoping that um, if we get the cherimoyas to fruit right, to fruit during the cooler season, maybe we can get some better quality cherimoya fruit. That would here. be great to know. That would be nice. We'll find out. Yeah. And there's also some uh, cherimoya, atomoya crosses, so that'd be three quarters cherimoya mm -hmm. that have good fruit. This makes, makes it more resistant, doesn't it, with the different genetics of the colder varieties? Yeah, the, they cross the cherimoya with the sugar apple because cherimoyas don't do well in South Florida where they've tried them. Because they like it a little bit cooler. Yeah. And, and they and, also like to have a little bit of coolness to make it have better fruits. Yeah, if it's too hot or too cold, the fruit don't taste right. So they've got just this narrow temperature range where the fruit's really something special. Mm -hmm. So apparently Northern California can be too cold, even though it's frost free. And, um, you know, Florida can be too hot, even though it's frost free. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we were in Nicaragua, we uh, went to the volcanic islands and they were so tropical. They had tons of different types of anonas growing there especially like the cherimoya and that one species that I was showing you. But we don't really know what it is, but it might be a type of custard apple. All right. Pet pack charm will do Lisa. Let's see. Perfect job. John's a pro at this. He's been doing it for many years. Started grafting when I was 19. That's why you're so good. Now I'm 45, so. Man, you don't even look like it. I'd like to say I it's clean. I thought you were 30, right at 30. I'd like to say it's clean living. He eats good. <laughs> it's all the fruits. Okay, I'm so gonna, what are you going to do I'm now? Gonna put, I'm going to do the Lisa. Actually, I'm going to be smart and wrap, wrap the bud a little bit before I do it. I didn't do that last time, and I paid for it. It makes it difficult. But yeah, wrap, I like to wrap the scion before you do the grafting. Especially when you're putting it on the side like that. Yeah, because sometimes they'll move when you're trying to yeah. you wrap can it near the end. Torque it out of position. Now this one, so you can see the size is going to be mismatched. This one I'm going to line up on one side and not the other. And I think even though these are going to branch low, mm -hmm. you could do a you know one branch this way, one kind Can of a, pull it down a little bit. informal espalier kind of thing. Probably the bark is going to be a different thickness, so the bark might not line up on the outside on this one. Mm -hmm. See how this one's got some pigment in it? I just learned yesterday from Luke. Miss him in real quick. That um, mm -hmm. that this isn't bad budwood. That it, these red fruited varieties can have pigmented um, bark and cambium. So I thought they were the sticks weren't healthy, but no, they're pigmented. That means the fruits have more. I would say any oxidants, it's more like red and... I don't know what the pigment purple. is. Like the lycopene, like you see in red grapefruit and red navels is, is I, I, don't, I don't remember. I was reading something that like the, the blood orange pigment is, is better. So see the difference in the thickness of the bark here? Okay. So, yeah. I, so um, if I line up the bark on the outside, I'm missing the cambium on this. So I'm actually going to have to place this 
a little bit more in the center. And I'm see how I'm rocking it so I can bring the cut down without cutting my fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for ten years I cut a lot of fingers. Way to learn. But, okay, let me see. Is that lined up right? That looks pretty good. So uh, I tried to line up the cambium on this side, and it's there. That looks pretty close to line up. So yeah, it does. It's lined That's up good. on the inside, not on the outside. We'll see if that takes. That's the one I'm least confident about. And what was this one called again? This is a, a Le uh, Lisa. Lisa Adamoya. Lisa Adamoya. Yeah. It's one Cross of between the... a sugar apple and a cherry boy, right? Yep. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's pink or red. So it was crossed between one of the purple... I guess purple sugar apples, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the parents were. I read it one time, but I don't remember. And you said you've had the fruit of this one? Yeah, I've had Lisa. What do you think about it? It's not my favorite Adamoya. It's, I mean, it's good. You know, it's better than your average sugar apple. It's hard when you have a really tasty one and be like, okay, I don't really like this other one it, I mean, as I, much. I wouldn't say it's, I think it's worth growing. Yeah. But when you have a good fruit, it's hard to go back and have a bad fruit and be like, I thought this was good. Especially when you go to the market, instead of picking a fresh fruit off the tree, the fruits are always better off the tree. I wonder if that stayed in position or if I moved it. Well, we'll see what happens. Which side? This side looks like it's more on this side. That's good. That's where I wanted it. Alright, you're good then. I still see where the half you were talking about, how small it is. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, Walter. That's, That's Walter. Mr. Walter right there. He, he actually actually lives here. All right, so we need to mark these. Let me make Good some idea. make some tags. Hey, thank you so much, John. We really appreciated it. Until next time, we're gonna be growing some more in, in Grafton. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. There you go. Pet pack charm. We did one more. Looks perfect. Thanks, man.